Let's look at how to create Cisco Access Control Lists, or ACLs. First of all, I have a little setup here. I have a bunch of devices, and I have a router that's going to be acting as a firewall. And I also have some objectives for what I want my firewall to do. I want my firewall to prevent the LAN and the DMZ from sending and receiving SMTP traffic. So that would be your regular mail traffic, and you kind of want to prevent that because you don't want your internal clients to become spammers. Also, I want to allow the mail server inside to send and receive SMTP traffic. So probably you want to allow the mail server to be able to communicate first before you prevent the LAN and the DMZ from communicating. I also want to prevent all machines from connecting to band.example.com. So I don't want it, them to talk to it. It's just some site that I don't want them to talk to. Um, I want to allow all other web queries and responses. And I want to allow the DNS service in and out from the dns.example.com server. So first of all, I want to probably prioritize these and order these. You want the biggest thing first. So I want them to be able to make all their web queries. I imagine that's the most common thing because as you worked your way down the list, the access control list, each, each ACE or entry, once it's uh, reached, uh, if it permits something, it goes through, and if it denies it, it denies it. But it has to keep going down through the rules until it finds one that matches. All right, so here is my firewall server. So I can make this a little bigger. And I'm gonna make two different access control lists, one for the inbound and one for the outbound. So I first go into my global configuration, T, <clears throat> and I don't really need to know which interface is which right now until I apply it, but I want to create it. I just know that the inbound is inbound and outbound is outbound. So I'm going to start by creating first my, well, let's do the outbound. So I'm going to do a named list. So I do IP and I do access list and then I have to decide what type it is. Is it extended or is it standard? Now, because I am doing things with port numbers, I need to do an extended access list. So I'll do extended and then I need to think of a name for this list and I'm going to call this one outbound. Now, the first thing I want to do is probably look at allowing the web stuff, but I want to prevent people from connecting to band.example.com. So I need to maybe do that one first. And then I can allow the web stuff after that. So the first thing I do is decide, am I doing a permit or am I doing a deny? And so I want to first deny. And then I get to decide, well, what is it I'm denying? Because I want to prevent all machines from connecting to band.example.com, that means everything. So I'm going to go with the IP because that's the entire IP protocol. I want to pick the source and it's really any source, any machine that is going to the destination host address. And then the host address of the band.example.com is 172.16.0.4. And at that point, I am done with my rule. I can just press enter and it is now in that access list. The access list is not applied, so nothing is happening but it is there. So next I'm going to permit all web traffic because I want to make sure it all gets through and there's no problems there. And this one is not going to be IP. It's going to be just web. So I'll do TCP and then I decide what is the source? Well, I want any source because this is outbound and then I want the destination. I want it to be, well, any destination. And I decide, well, which port number do I want to give? And I want to allow it to go to port 80. That's your regular standard web traffic. I also want to do the same rule, but 443, which would be my HTTPS. So I allow both those through. So now all my web traffic can get out and we're good. The next thing I want to do <clears throat> is look at the mail traffic. 
So mail servers, I want to allow the mail server first, and then I want to deny everything else. So my mail server, permit TCP, and I want it to be from a specific machine. So this is the outbound interface, or outbound port on the outbound interface, and I want to decide what is the source, and the source is going to be the mail server, and the mail server is 192.168.0.3, so I can do from the host 192.168.0.3, because that's the mail server, any destination it should be allowed to communicate with, and then I decide that it's going to be looking at port 25, so this means that no one else should be able to communicate with anything else. Well, any other SMTP service outside. So now my inside clients can't be spammers. Now, I could deny the SMTP explicitly, or I could just assume that at the end of everything I do, I am going to be having this implicit deny that will block everything else that's not mentioned. So I'm just going to go with that assumption that there is an implicit deny and I'll be fine. The next thing is to block DNS from everybody except for the DNS server. So there's a default implicit deny. So I'm just going to do the permit. Permit. And I want to permit DNS queries from the DNS server. So that would be a TCP and UDP. So when I do that, 168.0 dot, and then the DNS server is the dot two, any EQ, and this is 53. So the TCP portion is usually for zone transfers, but if I want to do regular queries, they're usually UDP. So now I'm allowing this DNS server to make queries and do zone transfers, but no one else can. And the reason you might do this is if you want to make sure that your DNS server can kind of control everyone else's DNS queries so they're not sneaking around you. So now we have this set of rules in place, and I'm going to go ahead and check it out and make sure that things work. I've not applied the rule, but at this point I wanted to check to make sure. Let's check to see if Alice... Alice's machine can connect to my band server. So I go to band.example.com. I go there and it connects to the band website. Oh, that's bad. So now I'm going to go ahead and apply my rule and then see if I can prevent it from happening. So I just exit out of here and then I want to go into my interface. Now the interface I want to connect to is the outbound interface. So that's G00, and it's going out to the internet, and I want it the outbound direction on that interface. So I go int G0 slash 0 slash 0, and then when I created the access list, it's an access list. When I apply it, it's an access group. So I do IP access group, and then I look and say, well, what do I need to do? I need to think of the name, and the name is outbound, and the direction is, well, out, because it's leaving that interface. At that point, it should be applied, so I can go over here, and I can do a browser again, go to band.example.com, and you can see that it's suddenly being timed out because well, it just doesn't work anymore. So there we go. I can also check to make sure other things work. I have a search engine out there, so at search.example.com. And that one comes up just fine. So we can see that everything is working right there. All right. Next thing we want to do is take care of the inbound. So really we want to allow all of our established traffic inbound. We just want to prevent um, the SMTP stuff from being inbound. And so we're going to go ahead and make that rule. 
So we go to this right here, we do our IP access list, and this one is going to be our inbound. Oops, we need to tell that it's extended, and then inbound. All right. So this one, we want to allow the SMTP traffic to the mail server. And if we remember correctly, the mail server was the dot three. So let's do that rule first. So permit, permit, TCP host, actually it's any source, any. And then the destination would be our host 192.168.0.3. Three, and we are allowing the port 25 inbound. All right, we want to deny all other SMTP traffic, so I can go ahead and put a deny in there. Deny TCP any host to any any host port 25, so no one else should be able to receive the SMTP traffic. <clears throat> At this point, I can say, well, what do I want to allow now? Do I want to say, allow my web traffic or do I want to allow the DNS traffic? So let's go with the web because that's kind of a bigger one. Um, I probably should have put that one earlier, but we'll, we'll go ahead and put it now. So if we do a permit, TCP any to any, any, thank you. But it's actually any any server from port 80 to any destination. <clears throat> so this one right here is a little bit different um, because I'm permitting from well yeah anyone out there for 443 as well. And I guess I might want to also include the another permit for the mail server as well. So if they are, this is going to my mail server, but I also want to allow anything from the mail server, from mail servers. All right. At this point, we are getting pretty close. We want to now allow our DNS queries in. And so we want to permit, well, let's go ahead and do any, any, Q23. And we also want to allow responses back. So we do a 53 here. And we want both of these to be available as UDP as well. All right, you can see how trying to figure out whether it's coming in from certain things or not can be kind of tricky because you have to figure out which port is it coming from. And you can actually save that, save some time by just using the established keyword as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So to permit um, any TCP communication, we just type in permit TCP any, any, and then instead of doing port numbers of that, we just use the established keyword. And that will solve that problem. So now we don't have to worry about doing each one individually. At this point, we are pretty good to go. Um, our rules might work, they might not work. We're going to go ahead and apply them. And this is now the int g0 slash 0 inbound interface. So IP access group. And this is going to be our list, which is inbound. And then the direction, which is in. So we probably want to test some things to make sure things are working correctly. So let's go ahead and pull up uh, Alice and Machine again. We'll do a search. Seems like it's the band. Let's see, band. Hmm. It's 
not loading. Let's go ahead and pull up the browser again and do search.example.com and go. And that one pulls up and band does not come up. So that indicates that we didn't break anything. So that's good. We can go ahead now and look at this and we can see the rules. If you want to see the rules after you've done it and you put them in place, you can X out of here. So you can have in a show uh, int and you can look at these and look at information about the interfaces and in here somewhere well I guess that doesn't really show up, but show run you can see that it is applied on the interfaces you can see the inbound and the outbound you can also type in show access list and you can see your list as they are currently written and you can even see that they have switched in some of the numbers for names. Anyway, this is how you can set up your access lists.